بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى وصلاة والسلام على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله العظيم <coughs> الحمد لله after a break of a week or so hopefully inshallah we'll come back to our regular schedule or are the kids still interested in a snow day we didn't have school today right no so what about the halaqa then? <laughs> Who did we speak about last time? Gone for a long time. Gone for a long time. <laughs> One of the female companions, the wives of Rasulullah we spoke of was Juwayriyah radiallahu anha. Inshallah, today we'll speak about another wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa our mother. And then, inshallah, we'll move on after this session today to some of the notable companions of Rasulullah who were not within that one narration of Ashara Mubashara. <clears throat> so we'll speak of them as well, inshallah. Today, we'll speak of Safiyah bint Huyi ibn Akhtab radiallahu anha. Safiyah radiallahu anha, she was one of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she had come from the Jewish clan. She, if you were to look at her genealogy, her tree, she is the daughter of one of the prophets of Allah, Harun alayhi salatu wasalam. So she becomes the daughter of Harun alayhi salatu wasalam and the niece of, come on guys, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And subhanallah, today you'll come to know she becomes the wife of another messenger of Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the circle that she was in, being the daughter of Harun, her uncle is Musa, and then her husband is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. <clears throat> she wasn't a Muslim at the time when the incident or the battle of Khaybar took place. The battle took place close to the seventh year after the hijrah of Rasulullah towards Medina. She was initially wed to one of <coughs> you know, the individuals of her town who was a poet. And then after him, she was wed to another person by the name of Kinana ibn Abil Haqiq, who was also a poet. After him, he was killed within the battle of Khaybar. She wed, she came into the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's mentioned about Safiya radiallahu anha that after the conquest of Khaybar, Dahya radiallahu an, one of the male companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was known for his looks, mashallah. He was known for the beauty Allah had blessed him with, how handsome he was. It's mentioned that when Dahya radiallahu ta'ala an used to walk, he would walk with his face covered out of the fear that what if others may fall into you know, a fitna due to his, how, how handsome he was. There's another narration that Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wasalam would come in the form of Dahya radiallahu an. Subhanallah, now subhanallah, just a thought. When a man is so handsome that he's forced to cover himself, imagine what about the sisters? So Dahya radiallahu ta'ala an, he upon this occasion, came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he requested Prophet of Allah that, O Prophet of Allah, allow me to get, you know, one of the captives of war. And I'd mentioned of this two weeks ago, the, you know, overall, the general rules about uh, war in itself in those days. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he mentioned, fine, go to the prisoners and take whomever you like. So Dahya radiallahu ta'ala, he went <coughs> and he had chosen for himself Safiyah radiallahu anha 
And after selecting her, now Muhammad وسلم, is told by one of the other companions, the Ru Prophet of Allah, Dahya radiallahu anh has selected Safiya binti Huyay ibn Akhtab. She is the daughter of, you know, two of the clans of the Jews, Banu Nadir, Banu Quraida. And she's a daughter of their leader. So, O Prophet of Allah, what if a suggestion that you take her rather than Dahya radiallahu anh taking her? So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he thought of this. He asked for Dahya to be summoned. Dahya radiallahu taala had come forth, and he made his appeal. And Dahya radiallahu an happily, with you know consent, had given Safiya radiallahu anha to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'd also mention similar story took place with Juwayriya radiallahu anha, and the reasoning behind it. Now, <coughs> if you recall, what was one of the merits of Juwayriya radiallahu anha? I'll give you a hint. The barakah that she brought with herself. Do you guys remember? <coughs> that just because of her embracing Islam and coming into the marriage of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what happened? <laughs> Mashallah, she was a daughter of the defeated you know, uh, clan. And after she was wed into the marriage of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of the prisoners of that war were freed because the Sahaba refused to have any prisoners who were technically the in-laws of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they were all freed. And because of that, one by one, her entire village had embraced Islam. Even her father who had embraced Islam. You remember the incident when his father, her father thought that I'll go and take all of my wealth, all of my camels, and in exchange I will free my daughter and just give all the camels to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi except for the two camels that he left behind. He found, he, he found them to be a little too you know, attractive and more expensive. And then he came before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi what did he say? So exactly, so Prophet of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, what about the other two that you kept behind in that valley? So even the father embraced Islam. And because of this, the two parties united in such a manner that it could have not been done had Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did not marry Juwayriya radiallahu anha. So the same proposal was given again, that O Prophet of Allah, she is the daughter of you know, Banu Nadir and Banu Quraida. There was a third clan. Anyone remember? <coughs> the three main clans that resided within Khaybar. Banu Nadir, Banu Quraida, and Banu Qaynuqa. Right? So because of this, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he requested Dahya radiallahu an, and Dahya radiallahu ta'ala an willingly gave Safiya radiallahu anha into the hand of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> Prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned then, he you know, proposed to Safiya that I can either free you and then let you unite with your family, your relatives, or embrace Islam and then I will wed you. So she embraced Islam and she wed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's mentioned about... Um, you know, the meal <coughs> after the marriage. <coughs> Anas radiallahu ta'ala, he narrates that the next day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, um, the, the narration about her mehr, her dowry. So Anas radiallahu ta'ala mentions that what was the dowry set, set for um, Safiya radiallahu anha. So the response was her freedom. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had freed her and then wed her. So her freedom was the price or more or less the dowry for her nikah. In the morning, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to give a meal to his companions upon this occasion of you know, marrying Safiya, he requested all the Sahaba to bring forth whatever little food they had. Some brought bread, some brought dates, you know, some brought uh, a few of the other eatables. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had put all of it within a single sheet, a food sheet, and requested the Sahaba to consume and eat from it. That was more or less the meal which happened on the next day after the marriage occasion with Safiya radiallahu anha. The simplicity. So subhanAllah, you know, if someone gets married nowadays, maybe you can go around requesting people, bring a dish. You know, you bring that dish, you bring that dish. And that might just work for you. You know, save some money. What are the expenses involved in the after party of a marriage in food? Does anyone know? It's a lot. It's a lot. Seems like no one's married here. <laughs> At least 10,000, right? Right or wrong? More than that. Well, if you were speaking from a female's mind, then it should be much more than that. <laughs> but from you know, the brother's mind, then we try to minimize our expenses. You say, oh no, I think, I think 10,000, 15,000, more than enough. 
right? And then your wife will say, 15,000? You can't rent a hall on that for that, let alone feed the people. So subhanAllah, you know, simplicity, keeping that in mind. <clears throat> so this is how the walima was done of Safiya radiallahu anha. <clears throat> After the marriage, <clears throat> when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa There's a narration that after the marriage, when they went back towards Medina, <clears throat> when the Sahaba, they, they saw the, the borderline of Medina itself, and they felt that they've come close to the city. Out of excitement, they started to race their, you know, rise their camels and horses. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did just that as well. Safi radiallahu anha was seated with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So <clears throat> as they're <clears throat> about to enter into Medina, you know, it's that little the final mark which is left for their journey to end in, they hastened, they, they rushed a bit, and in the process, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and the camel or the ride that he was riding slipped and both fell. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well as Safiya radiallahu anha, they both fell. The Sahaba mentioned, we quickly rushed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, we're okay, we're okay. They got back, got back up and went back into, went into the city. There's a story of how Safiya radiallahu anha mounted the ride of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's mentioned Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right when they left Khaybar or after the occasion of Alima when they left Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kneeled down he put one of his knees on the ground so that Safiya radiallahu anha could step on uh, his thigh and mount the ride He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did this so that she can actually you know step on and then get onto the ride but Safiya radiallahu anha she, it's mentioned she was a very she was an intellectual a very wise and, and a righteous subhanallah so what she did, she did not want to put her foot onto the thigh of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So she equally put her own knee on the thigh of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And then climbed the ride How could I put my foot upon the leg of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I won't do so When the marriage proposal was given to Safiya radiallahu anha That oh Safiya, you have a choice would you like to, you know, embrace Islam and then marry me? Or would you like to be set free and go meet your relatives? Safiya radiallahu anha, she mentioned that, O Prophet of Allah, when I was a mushrika, when I was in the state of shirk, I desired for you. Then, being, you know, being able to embrace Islam and then wed you. Now, after embracing Islam, why would I not do it? O Prophet of Allah, yes, I agree. I would, I'd be more than willing to marry you. So Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha, this is in the manner that she actually wed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's another incident <coughs> that upset Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the battle of Khaybar took place, her husband, her brother, her uncles, her relatives were killed because they took part active role in this battle against the Muslims. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he asked for Safiya, he told Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an that bring her to me, call her to me. So Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an, he held on to her hand and he took her through the corpses, you know, through the relatives that were killed of her own and he brought her before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This, you know, in this manner Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disapproved. He was upset at Bilal radiallahu ta'ala How could you do that? How could you just happen to, you know, make her uh, walk over the dead bodies of her own relatives? That would bring her sadness. So. Safiya radiallahu anha, she mentions that, you know, this is before embracing Islam, I did not detest anyone more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he became the reason of my father passing away, of my brother passing away, of my relatives passing away. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her afterwards, he reasoned with her, that your father, he became the means and the cause of the entire Arabian Peninsula to turn against me. I had to be there to oppose him, to fight him. He became that root cause of this entire incident. And not only that, your father did this, your father did that. He gave her so much more to, to reason with. Only then did Safiya radiallahu anha truly understand and agree that yes, you know, my father, he was saved for as long as he did not cross swords with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The moment he came and tried to fight Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, the, 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 the consequences would have been obvious. So she mentions after that, nothing filled my heart for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except for love. Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha, of course, giving preference to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the story that I mentioned, she mentions that, you know, when I was not a Muslim, I had thought of you. 
And now that I have embraced Islam, of course, I would give you preference. This is, you know, further substantiated through one of the dreams she had. It's narrated by her. She mentions, <coughs> I was within, you know, <coughs> I was resting, my head was rested in the lap of my husband, her older husband. And she says, I saw within a dream that as if the moon had descended within my lap. And the background to this narration is, Muhammad Sallallahu after seeing Safiya, he asked Safiya later on that there was a, a bruise on her face, a mark. So he asked, oh Safiya, what is this? So she mentioned that some time ago when, I was, when my head was rested into the lap of my you know, uh, husband, my ex-husband, I saw within a dream as if the moon had descended and rested within my lap. So I had awakened from the dream and I told this to my husband. And I said, this is what I've seen. He slapped me, you know, in a harsh manner. He slapped me and he said to me that, <clears throat> do you wish to marry the king of Medina, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You wish to go and meet with him? So he interpreted the dream as if this is what's going to happen. You will become the wife of the king of Medina, who is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you wish for that? And because of this, he slapped her. And later on, he was killed in the battle. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, truly did care for and and looked out for Safiya radhiyallahu anha upon all occasions. Once, one of the um, noble wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, Hafsa radhiyallahu anha, she called Safiya radhiyallahu anha a daughter of a Jew. Her lineage, she had come from the Jewish tribe. So this felt derogatory. It felt very offensive to Safiya radiallahu anha. So she you know, became sad and started to weep. When she came before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Prophet of Allah asked, Safiya, why are you crying? She mentioned, because Hafsa called me this. Hafsa said this to me. So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi he mentioned, you know, oh Safiya, you are a daughter of a Prophet of Allah, Harun alayhi salatu wasalam, your uncle, is Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and your husband himself is a prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What does Hafsa have over that she rejoices? What does she have that she has so much, subhanAllah, you know, uh, pleasure and, 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 and enjoyment in? What you have, none of the other others have. Another story <coughs> of some of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they said the same thing that she is a daughter of a Jew. In fact, we have you know, preference over her. We have superiority over her. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he came back to Safiya radiallahu anha and he mentioned that, Oh Safiya, why didn't you say to them that, Look, I am a daughter of a prophet of Allah. My uncle is a prophet and my husband is a prophet of Allah as well. What do you have? You know, why didn't you say this to them? To the other wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once <coughs> Zainab radiallahu anha said the same thing to her that you're a daughter of a Jew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so upset about this over this that he did not speak to Zainab radiallahu anha for close to two months that what you said was wrong and subhanallah we need to be very mindful of what we say to others really of what we say to others because you know, there's a saying you know, a wound received by you know, a sword for example will heal over time but a wound which is, you know, uh, struck by words will never heal. And subhanAllah, that's just how our nature is, especially the nature of the women folk. You say something wrong or something harsh to them once in your life, and if they're not willing to forgive you, they'll take you back into that memory lane and tell you, 10 years ago you said this to me. You know, he smiled, oh subhanAllah. <laughs> so, we should not you know, do, do, do our best. Be extra careful as to what we say to others. Be mindful of what we say to others. If you end up hurting someone else's feelings, you know, subhanAllah, Allah is just. So it's, it's appropriate that we seek their forgiveness before they come and take our own hasanat. So we really need to be mindful in making sure that if we can't bring anyone benefit, then don't bring them harm. Now be extra nice. Go out of your way to, to be nice to others. <clears throat> Once Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when I was reading this narration, 
I thought to myself, sometimes it's necessary as well. <coughs> she was traveling with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the other wives. Her ride was a, a, one of the weakest rides that there were, you know, within the group. So the, her ride sat down. And Safi radiallahu anha started to cry out of the weakness of her own ride. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, you know, to her rescue and he sat her down. She's weeping, crying. He, he, he wipes away her tears with his, you know, blessed hand and, and his shawl. She continues to cry. She keeps crying. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calmed her. He convinced her. He spoke to her. She still continues to cry. And then it's mentioned, she, you know, she herself, she mentioned, I, I wasn't listening to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he kind of reprimanded him. He scolded me a bit. He became a little upset. So subhanAllah, you know, there, there, there are measures to be taken. When you try to convince your wife in a certain manner and it's not working, and there's nothing to be afraid, there's nothing to worry about, but she still isn't listening, it's okay to be a little harsh. That, hey, let's stop it already. You know? And Safira Dallalana mentions, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after doing all that he did, he wiped away my tears, convinced me, consoled me, yet I still kept crying, and then he got a little upset at me. She, she mentioned he got a little upset at, upset at me. What is, what is shawl? I'm sorry? You said shawl. The, 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 the sheet, the shawl oh. that he was wearing. So, <clears throat> another story we can learn a lot from uh, of Safiya radiallahu anha. Once Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, after dark, he was speaking to her in, in the public space, you know, outside of a home. Some of the Sahaba, the Ansari companions who happened to pass by, <laughs> they saw that <coughs> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking to a female. So they quickly, they picked up their speed and they quickly started, you know, tried to just pass, pass through. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned to the Sahaba, stop, you know, don't, don't rush. Don't rush, don't hasten. And this is your mother, Safiya, my wife. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Subhanallah, how could we ever assume otherwise? How do we think that you're with someone else? So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, no, because Shaytan, you complete the narration. Shaytan, Complete the narration. Do you, anyone remember? Right. <coughs> Shaytan <coughs> runs through our veins just as how blood runs through our veins. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentions, you know, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانُ يَجْرِي مِنَ الْإِنسَانِ كَمَجْرِ الدَّمِي أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَامُ Shaytan runs through our veins just as how blood runs through. So he starts and he mentions, and I wanted to clarify any misconception or misunderstanding that you may have taken from this. So I wanted to clarify and remove all doubts. So he, وسلم, he went out of his way in making sure that these two companions don't leave or pass thinking or possibly later on Shaytan whispering to them that who was Muhammad وسلم, with? So he clarified the situation there and then. You know, another story of which um, speaks that how Shaytan sometimes can get the best of us. He can mess with our temperament. He can get us angry. There's a story of Safiya radiallahu anha and <coughs> how kind she was towards uh, you know, people of Jewish lineage. During the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, one of the slave girls of Safiya radiallahu anha, she went to Umar radiallahu an and complained. She said, Amir Mu'mineen, Safiya, she likes the day of Saturday more than the day of Friday. She, the, for the Jewish, what was it? For the Jews, it was Saturday. Sabbath, right? Saturday. For the Christians, Sunday. Sunday. And for the Muslims, Yawm al-Jum'ah, Friday. So this slave girl of Safiya, radiallahu anha, goes to Umar, radiallahu anha, and says, that, you know, Safiya, she prefers Saturday over Friday. She has more love for Saturday over Friday. And then she also gives preference, and she, you know, goes out of her way in helping the Jews, in you know, joining kinship with the Jews. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala wasn't, he became a little upset at this. So he sent a message back to Safiya radiallahu anha, is this is true? So when Safiya radiallahu anha received the message, she mentioned, I used to love Saturday, but ever since I embraced Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Yawmul Jumu'ah, Sayyidul Ayyam, the leader of all days, then from that moment onwards, I also started to love Friday more than I used to love Saturday. And as for me, loving the Jews and joining kinship with them, is there a harm to keep relative, uh, ties of family and kinship? 
Because Islam tells us to do that. You know, to join relationships, to uphold family ties and keep your relatives happy. Is there something wrong with that? So she sent a message back to Umar radiallahu anh. And Umar radiallahu anh understood that, right, she's right. And then Safiya radiallahu anh, she mentioned to her um, slave girl, you tell me why did you say this to Umar radiallahu anh? Whatever he said, said. But why did you go and say this to Umar radiallahu anh? So the response of the slave girl was that, you know, Shaitan whispered to me. Shaitan placed it into my heart to go and tell. So subhanAllah, Shaitan came and found this to, to be an opportunity that, you know, she was once a Jew, she's giving preference and she's doing so much for her Jewish relatives. And then since she was once a Jew, she still may have that love for Saturday more than the day of Friday. So, you know, these whispers went into the heart of the slave girl. She took it to the court of Umar radiallahu anh. Subhanallah. You know, you have Safiya radiallahu anha who was able to defend herself. Not many people can do that. So at the end of the day, who's the culprit? The devil. The devil. So we need to really protect ourselves from the whispers of shaitan and from jinnat and so and so. Protect ourselves by reciting, you know, simple du'as, the ayahs in the morning and in the evening. Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was known to be a, an intellectual. Her passing away. She passed away <coughs> in the month of Ramadan, 50 years after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu and she's buried in Jannatul Baqiyah. With that, inshallah, we have ended with the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu and their stories and the 10 Ashra Mabashra. Inshallah, from next week onwards, I'll speak about some of the, the highly notable companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa For example, like Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an. You have Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. You have Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. Who were they? And, and their merits and so on and so on, inshallah. With that, we conclude. Subhanakallahumma wa hamdika. Ashadu illa ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Jazakumullah khair.